we're living with the elderly. This is to be expected. Exactly. This is like a punishment game. Just a little mischief. There's no need to get all worked up. Hmm. So that's the attitude. Understood. If you two are like that, then I have something in mind, too. My name is Heli. I'm living alone in the city now, away from my parents' home. It takes about an hour by car, so I can't go there often. It's a question of whether I can go once a year. Actually, I couldn't go home last New Year's because I was busy with work. But this year, I can go home after a long time. It's been a while since I got married two years ago and saw my brother and his wife, who live with my mother, at my parents' house. So I bought the souvenirs requested by them and drove happily. I'm sure I'll have a great New Year's holiday. That's what I thought, but... What's going on with this? But when I got home, things seemed off somehow. The air seemed stagnant even from outside the house. It was as dark as if the house had been abandoned for years. The atmosphere inside became even stronger after I entered. From what I could see, it seemed that my mother's lack of energy was one factor. My mother was always smiling and energetic. I watched them for a while, and it seemed that my mother was doing all the cleaning and cooking. Mom, are you okay? Can I help you? It's okay, Heli. You've come home, so relax or something. You must be tired from the long drive. My mother said that and wouldn't let me help her. But she was also doing heavy housework, like carrying heavy things. Yet, my brother Rick and sister-in-law Sadie ignored my mother. Even though my mother was working in front of them, they were playing games together. They even asked to bring tea to my working mother, which was absurd. Hey mom, are you really okay? Should I say something to my brother? There might be things that are difficult for you to say to them, right? It's really okay. You don't need to worry about anything. More importantly, since you've come home, take it easy. Your bed is prepared in the guest room, so you can take a nap if you want. But, even when I asked her quietly, my mother didn't say anything. So I thought there was nothing I could do. What surprised me was during dinner. In the living room, my mother's specialty dishes were lined up. Among them were many of my favorite dishes. Every single one brought back nostalgic flavors and lifted my spirits. Wow. Thank you. I'm happy because it's been a while since I had your home-cooked meals. But, huh? But my mother wasn't in the living room. Surprisingly, my mother didn't come into the living room from the kitchen. Mom, what's wrong? Why don't you come over here? If there's anything else you need to prepare, I'll help you. I went to the kitchen to check, and there was my mother, eating while standing alone in the cold kitchen, without even a chair. Why aren't you coming over here, Mom? Why are you eating here? It's nothing, just the usual. Besides, I made a lot, so make sure you eat properly. I don't think my cooking skills have declined. My mother said that sadly. Yet in the living room, my brother and sister-in-law were eating without caring about my mother. They even chatted while watching TV. What's going on? Rick, Sadie. Why is mom eating in the kitchen? Isn't that strange? Mom has her reasons. You wouldn't understand since you don't live with us. That's right. For example, 
when you get old, your knees hurt, so it's hard to sit in a chair. You wouldn't understand unless you lived together, but sometimes it's easier to stand. Sometimes it's harder to sit. That's what my brother and sister-in-law said. While I thought their attitude was strange, I couldn't say anything. Indeed, it had been two years since I last saw my mother. I hadn't been in touch much, so there might be some circumstances. So I backed down at that time. But as I watched carefully, my mother's behavior was indeed strange. To be precise, both my brother's family and my mother's behavior were strange. They didn't try to talk to my mother. They behaved as if my mother wasn't there. It even felt like my mother was only visible to me. But my brother and sister-in-law had only been married for two years. They had been living together since they got married, so they rarely had a chance to be alone. So maybe they were still in their honeymoon phase? Maybe they wanted to immerse themselves in their own world? It was possible to think that way. And normally, I wouldn't interfere with the frequency of their conversations since I didn't live with them. Thinking that, I went to bed that day with a somewhat uncomfortable feeling, but what surprised me was what happened afterward. It was when I suddenly wanted to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and woke up. My mother was sleeping in the cold hallway in front of the entrance. She had many blankets on her, but today was an unusually cold day. Perhaps because a severe cold wave was hitting, my mother was shivering from the cold. Mom. What's wrong? Why are you sleeping here? It's nothing, just the usual. You don't have to worry about me. That's not okay. Even though we don't live together, I couldn't stay silent. I took my mother to the guest room where I was sleeping, saying that it was late at night. And the two of us slept in a warm room. And the next morning, I immediately asked my brother and sister-in-law about what happened yesterday. Why don't you talk to mom, make mom do all the housework, and why is mom eating while standing in the kitchen and sleeping in the hallway? But even though I was angry, my brother just smirked. Instead, my sister-in-law said something outrageous. Well, because she always causes trouble, it's punishment, right? Right. Punishment? What do you mean? There's punishment when you accumulate points for causing trouble. Eating in the kitchen with 5 points, doing housework alone with 10 points, and sleeping in the hallway with 20 points. She has accumulated 200 points, so she just needs to endure a few more days. What do you mean? Isn't that too much? And what do you mean by causing trouble? When I asked in a hurry, my sister-in-law answered casually. Well, for example, the taste of the food isn't to our liking. This is the worst for us who both work. It's really disappointing to come home looking forward to a meal and find it not delicious. Huh? Can't you just cook for yourselves? Helly, you don't get it. We're working outside, you know. Cooking is tough. That's right, Helly. Since your mother doesn't work, she should do the cooking. It's annoying to have someone at home who isn't productive. Yeah, that's right. It's a good status to be at home alone while we're working, right? Brother, isn't that a rude way to say it? Mom raised us single-handedly since our dad passed away. She worked and did all the housework to support us. Huh. That's just a parent's obligation, isn't it? Exactly. That's right. My brother and sister-in-law laughed out loud. I watched them and realized that there was no point in talking to them anymore. 
So I said this. Oh, that's how it is. Understood. Then I'll fulfill my duty as a daughter too. With that, I packed my mother's belongings without waiting for their response. My mother's belongings were much fewer than when I last saw them two years ago, and that alone made me feel sad. But I held back my tears, packed up, and put my apologetic mother in my car. My brother and his wife watched us with smirks. Are you taking the nuisance away? Great. This house belongs to us. Rick. Let's have fun from now on. Ignoring the two of them, I drove away and took my mother home. And a few days later, it was the end of the vacation and the first day of work. I received a frantic call from my brother. Hey. Nothing's arrived yet. What's going on? You did that to mom. Did you think I'd continue to tolerate you just like before? Do you understand your position, big brother? What did you say? I haven't done anything wrong to you. Indeed, you haven't done anything to me. But you've done terrible things to my mother. Think carefully before you speak. I said that and hung up on my brother. Immediately after that. I received a call from my sister-in-law too. Hey. I just checked my email. What do you mean by cutting ties with us? Explain. Explain? Yes. What does it mean to cut ties with us? Well, cutting ties means ending the relationship. Sister-in-law, how many years have you been in the workforce? Don't you understand such a simple meaning? Are you okay? What? That's not what I meant. Don't make fun of me. Why should our company be cut off? Are you serious about that? If so, I am worried if you are okay as a human being rather than as a working adult. Do you remember what happened a few days ago? After saying that, I hung up on my sister-in-law too. Actually, I'm currently working for a major corporation. My brother is one of the freelance writers occasionally commissioned by the company. As much as he's my brother, there are plenty of other writers to replace him. And my sister-in-law is the daughter of a subcontractor company's president, which our department deals with. Honestly, cutting ties with them was easy. After handling their calls, I took a deep breath to calm down a bit. Then, I sent them both the same message simultaneously. You both have done terrible things to my mother. So I will fight to protect my mother as her daughter. Also, my mother's enemies are my enemies. I won't show any mercy. Besides, the reason you two met in the first place was because my brother saw the president's daughter who came to our company for work. My brother was just here to get work from me. Despite such a background, how can you think it's okay to be so disrespectful? I don't want to say this, but I tried to accommodate your relationship from the beginning of your meeting. But that ends today. They must have seen the message immediately and hurriedly replied. I haven't forgotten. That's why I have been nicer to you as my little sister than anyone. I even cleaned the guest room for New Year's. You think I can trust mom with that? That's right. I even prepared your favorite dishes for you. Have you forgotten that favor? After reading their messages, I replied to them again. You can't trust mom? You prepared? Who do you think you are to my mother, who raised us with care? You're both pathetic. Feel the shame. In the end, I stopped giving work to my brother. There are plenty of people who are more meticulous and quicker at their work than my brother. 
without the sibling connection, there's no need to favor him. A colleague who didn't know about my relationship with my brother once asked me something like this. Hey Helly, this Rick, the writer, hasn't been active lately, right? Has he not taken any of our jobs? Yeah, he said he didn't like our work, so he told us not to assign him any. So I guess we can just leave him alone. Huh. He's a weird guy. Even though he doesn't have that much skill. Honestly, can he really afford to cut ties with our company? I know, right? He misses deadlines, acts high and mighty, and for some reason, he's really pushy in price negotiations. I'll be relieved if we don't have to work with him anymore. The evaluation of my brother from a third-party perspective was just like this. My brother said the other day that 90% of his income comes from our company. So he must be in trouble now. With that attitude and skill, he probably won't find a new job easily. Well, he can struggle all he wants. As for my sister-in-law, apparently, what she did to my mother got back to her father, and he gave her a stern talking to. I received a hurried call from her father. I'll disown my daughter. So please, let's keep our relationship as it was. If there are any other conditions, I'll accept them. He's the president of a company that's related to ours, even if it's a subcontractor. It wouldn't be right to ignore what he said after that. So I laid out my conditions. Then, please make them leave the house right now and sincerely apologized to my mother. Of course, you'll need to pay appropriate compensation too. It seems the president immediately conveyed that to my sister-in-law. But she refused. Why should I apologize? Living with that old woman is just stressful. Dad should be more assertive too. Pathetic. Because of that attitude, I decided not to restore the relationship. I feel sorry for the president, but it's their own fault. This person is just like my brother and sister-in-law, who started giving us unreasonable quotes as soon as they got married. They negotiate prices aggressively but are sloppy with deadlines and communication. If they weren't relatives, I would have cut ties with them a long time ago. So it's only fair that the person who raised such a sister-in-law should feel the consequences. There's no need for me to go out of my way to save them from the trouble they brought upon themselves. So, in the end, my brother and sister-in-law were driven into a corner. According to friends from the area, they seem to have left the house without anyone noticing. That house originally accommodated our parents, my brother, and me. A spacious house for four people. Living there just the two of them must have been costly in terms of utilities. According to those friends, they were spotted in an apartment without even basic amenities like a bath or toilet. It seems they're really struggling without jobs. But it's no longer my concern. Even if they were to apologize now, I have no intention of forgiving them whatsoever. On the other hand, unlike those two, my mother has been regaining her spirits. Sleeping on a soft bed in my house, eating warm meals in a cozy place. She doesn't have to worry about household chores, and she can relax and sleep in on weekends. After continuing this lifestyle for a few months, she has become lively again, just like before. Back then, I was also being foolish. I thought your brothers were right, and I believed I was useless, so I thought I had to obey. Thank you for saving me, Helly. I'm the one who should apologize for realizing it so late and causing you pain. From now on, please tell me immediately if anything happens. I want to make up for the lost time and make you happy. It seems my mother has recently made friends in the neighborhood. 
Although she says she finds the unfamiliar town enjoyable, she also enjoys strolling around. Seeing my mother enjoying herself like that is more than anything else. I am determined to repay my mother for raising me well. That's the strong resolve I've made. How did you like this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.